I am Bill Mould. Here's my website, and this short video will be about Supreme nipple washers. If you go to the Supreme website, shown at the top, and look at some of the menus, you will find washers right here. We will look at two kinds of washers. Shown here are some spoke head washers, and they help adjusting the better bending to the hub of the spoke, or help the spoke fit better into the hub as you'll see. Here's a picture of a Supreme spoke inserted through a hub with an old narrow type of steel flange and we only have a 2.3 millimeter thickness and that gives us a poor fit of the spoke into the hub because we have quite a bit of play here. But we can help that by using one of these little half millimeter washers that are brass, nice soft metal, and that will help uh, fill up that little gap. We see a better picture here. The other type of washer is a nipple washer, which will increase the strength of the rim and also reduce friction between the nipple and the rim. The first example is oval nipple washers. Here we see a very inexpensive single wall rim. There is a nipple in it, but if I take one of these washers and I put that under the nipple, then I will get some considerable benefit in the strength of the rim. The problem is that most of the time these washers are too large to fit through the outer wall. Here are some other washers, flat washers, and then HM nipple washers and MS nipple washers and both of these are shaped to accommodate a polyaxial nipple which we will now explain. This is my graphic of a Supreme polyaxial nipple and we see it sitting nicely going through a hole of a rim. If the nipple has to angle itself or articulate slightly to the left it can do that and still make good contact with the hole. Similarly, the nipple can articulate this way. In all three of these cases, notice that the nipple is still making contact with all 360 degrees of the hole in the rim. Here is a diagram from the Supreme website that also shows how the nipple can articulate. On the right is a non-polyaxial nipple from another company and we'll just call that from brand X. Now I have exaggerated the flatness of the underside of the brand X nipple for illustration purposes, but it's also clear that it does not come anywhere near approximating the hemispherical shape of the polyaxial nipple on the left. And it sits very nicely in the rim in this picture. Here we see the nipple articulating to the left and to the right. But in these last two cases, I'm not making perfect contact with all 360 degrees of the circle of the hole because I have a gap here and I have a gap here. I would rather use nipples that look like the picture on the top than at the bottom. We're now going to look at four scenarios in the use of washers. Here we have no washer, here a Supreme flat washer, here a Supreme HM washer, here a Supreme MS washer. We will look and see how we can use these washers to reduce friction and increase the strength of the rim at the same time, starting with looking at reducing friction. In the first picture, no washer with an HM washer and with an MS washer. If you use either of these washers, you want to make sure you put a little bit of oil or grease between the head of the nipple and the washer. Now we'll look at how washers can arguably increase the strength of a rim and we'll compare two situations with no washer and a Supreme MS washer. In each picture, we're going to look very carefully at a couple of places. Right here, where the nipple or the washer makes direct contact with the hole, and then down here, where the spoke nipple emerges from the hole. 
I will continue to use my own graphics for illustration purposes, but here is a nice CAD drawing that I got from Sapim about the new washer. I've made you some nice graphics to explain all of this, and we see on the right a rim, and on the left a cross-section of the rim. So let's see what we have here. This is the spoke bed on the rim seen in cross-section, and when I look at it from the side, this is the spoke bed part of the rim. Here is the inner wall, and here is the inner wall in my graphic. Here is the where the um, end of the rim is. That would represent the circumference when we look at it in this picture here. This distance here of 18 millimeters is the same as 18 millimeters here. We insert some spokes into our hub and then install nipples. Just for fun, we can imagine having put a tire on the wheel, and then we can watch as our wheel spins. But what we're really interested in is the inner part of this wheel, so let's get rid of the tire. Let's get our circumference out of there. Let's get the inner wall out of there, leaving us just the spoke bed and the nipples and the spokes. We're going to look in some detail and see what happens inside this little box when we put tension on the spoke. And we're going to envision that short piece of the rim at the top shown there as a beam with a hole in it. There is my beam. There's the hole. Here's my nipple going through a hole in the beam, and as I pull that nipple down with spoke tension, you can imagine the beam bowing or bending slightly down like this. Here I am with no tension on the spoke, and with tension on the spoke. So we see that the beam has bowed down a little bit where the hole is, and that puts the top of the beam under compression and the bottom of the beam under tension. This is obviously not drawn to scale, but you can see how the forces tend to widen or open up the hole at the bottom. Of course, the tension on the spokes changes and fluctuates constantly as the wheel turns, and we can see what happens to the beam as the tension increases and decreases periodically. All of this very small but repetitive flexing of the rim will eventually fatigue the metal and cause cracks to develop along the spoke bed on the inside, which is where you typically see them. As a wheel builder, I'm pretty enthusiastic about this new washer, and I'm willing to make some predictions. These dimensions enable me to calculate the surface area of the flat side of the washer under the nipple that is flat against the rim, and that is a surface area of about 26 square millimeters. Now, there's no easy way to calculate the surface area of contact between the nipple and the spoke bed and the diagram on the left, but it's pretty obviously significantly less than the case on the right with the washer. In the picture on the left, the stress concentration points are concentrated right here, whereas on the picture on the right, the stress concentration points are spread out over a larger area, and that should reduce the strain on that part of the rim and reduce the likelihood of premature cracking. But the washer won't fit everywhere, and out of velocities, large array of rims. I pulled out four to illustrate this. If you look at the quill on the left, we see that the washer fits quite nicely in the uh, flat portion of the spoke bed, likewise the aileron. But the two rims on the right, the arrow and the deep V, are too curved at the bottom to be able to use that uh, washer. Now, certainly in the case of the DB, it's an immensely strong rim, so I don't think it really needs the washer anyway. If you're not currently a user of Supreme spokes and nipples, 
you can go to the website and click on where it says find a distributor and that will take you to this extensive list shown here are just the ones in the United States. Something I'm kind of proud of is if you click on where it says Supreme Friends then you'll see my school my wheel building school in Northern Virginia listed on the list of courses that they support. My contact information again here is my website and my email address. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this.